We honor all the police officers one more time. Aren't we thankful for their service? Praise the Lord. Amen. I keep telling my sons that they, they need to have a preacher for a hero, but every time they see a police officer, they quickly let me know who their heroes are. And I am very thankful for that. I give honor to all of you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Amen. Aren't you thankful to be alive in the presence of the Lord this morning? But most importantly, aren't we thankful that Jesus is here? Can we honor him and clap our hands and thank him for being alive and being in our lives? We worship him. We need him. And we adore him. Book of Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, will not hold you long. And John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. And John 20. 21, 22, give honor to my beautiful wife, my children, for being with me throughout this revival. Genesis 2, verse 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Somebody say the breath of life. And man became a living soul. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Someone say, he breathed on them. Breathe. Saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. I want to preach to you just for a few minutes this morning. Breathe on me, Jesus. Breathe on me, Jesus. Would you thank the Lord one more time for what's about to happen? Several more people are about to receive the Holy Ghost this morning. Worship you, magnify you, have your way in this place today. Release your authority and your power in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. You may be seated in the creation. We learn so many things, but something that stands out is when God was forming everything, making everything, when he made man of the dust of the ground, the Bible said that when he formed him, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Breath in the Hebrew, neshama, which is spirit. That's what it says, breath or the spirit of God, spirit of life. When God breathed into man's body, he breathed literally the spirit of God inside of man and man rose up from the ground and became a living soul walking in perfection with dominion over every animal over the trees over everything he was around it was paradise not only because of how beautiful it was but because they had the spirit of god in them adam and eve had no enemies nothing to worry about except one little serpent that had a devil near him and the devil got inside of that snake and ultimately convinced Eve that what God had told Adam was not true. Several theologians and historians say that when Eve told the snake, we cannot eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we cannot touch it, even though God said you can't eat it. He never said you can't touch it. Several theologians say that when Eve saw that the tree was good for food, that literally meant that the serpent nudged her into the tree. And when she was nudged into the tree and touched the tree and nothing happened to her he convinced her that she could eat of the tree and she would be like God and therefore she ate the fruit and you know the story gave the fruit to Adam and even though they had been walking in dominion and power in literally a place of paradise they forfeited everything in one encounter with hell and sin entered this planet like a rampage and has not stopped ever since and from that moment on from that little moment of disobeying God after generation after generation you see sin manifesting at a deeper dimension the only sin Adam and Eve ever did according to our Bible was disobey one command but that one command of disobedience released murder in their children as Cain 
killed his own brother for out worshiping him and the world got worse and worse and worse until a few chapters later when God flooded the entire world because of the sin of mankind only let one family survive and that family had a righteous dad by the name of Noah but the kids rebelled after a while and sin crept back in the earth and before long everybody was killing everybody and Sodom and Gomorrah entered the, the land and sick perversion was all over the world and there was no remedy for God said I cannot flood the earth again and so sin was on a rampage everyone was doing evil and the Lord knew uh, the only way I can save them he touched Ataya is if I get out of heaven myself and come down to the planet and do something only I can do for mankind I don't care how good you are you cannot save yourself I don't care how powerful you are you cannot save yourself every one of us is born into sin so he went to a cross died on that cross shed blood on that cross for you and for I for our sins and he dies and he's resurrected and then right before he goes back into heaven he does something a little weird he looks at the disciples and breathed on them and said receive ye the Holy Ghost right before he went back up he released breath back into man like he did in creation when he did that in creation he made everything perfect everything was just right and man had a wonderful life to live but man forfeited that and now right before he goes back into glory even though he's saying I've offered you power of redemption of your sin there's something else that you need there's something that will take you back to Eden if you so will there's something that can give you dominion if you so will that you haven't had since the beginning of the world and he breathed on them which the Greek says to blow air upon them as in Genesis 2 verse 7 when he said he would breathe into man the breath of life and man became a living soul the same thing in Genesis 2 happened in John 20 and when God breathes on you I do not care shut up what sin that you are involved in how perverted your life is how messed up your home is if you want power over what you're bound by there's only one way to get it and that's through the breath of God someone needs God to breathe on them again this morning and give them power over their affliction over their flesh there's nothing more powerful than the Spirit of God coming inside of you. The breath of God coming inside of you. John chapter 3 and verse number 5. Put that up for me. John 3 verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, capital S, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, capital S, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You have to have the Spirit of God inside of you to belong to God that's going to get some people mad I could care less but you are not God's just because you claim him to be yours that makes no sense you didn't create him he created you anyone can accept him but if you want him to accept you he said my spirit has got to be inside of you that's the evidence that God said yeah I'm with you I'm inside that's me putting my stamp of approval upon you and when you get the spirit of God in you you get power you get authority you represent another kingdom you get dominion and you get life. 
the same breath that breathed into Adam and caused life from death from just a dead body laying there as that same breath will get inside of you and give you life in fact I speak to the Dallas police officers right now I speak life into your police station I speak life to your officers I speak against every spirit of death in this city that would try to attack our police in the name of Joe I wish I had more than half of you looking like statues right now we want our police to be alive and well someone ought to pray for them that God will breathe on them the breath of life where are all you at that were clapping earlier for them where are all you at now you ought to be standing saying I believe that God will protect their lives God can breathe on them where nothing evil can harm them oh yeah you pray life for your kids you pray life for your family you get a death threat you get cancer cells in your body you pray for God to heal you there's nothing different when you pray God speak life into the situation Lord breathe on this thing if you he does not have to give you a word he can just breathe on it from heaven and no matter what the spirit of death trying to attack your body is God's breath is more powerful than any agent of hell that would try to rise up and destroy he has power over death hell and the grave the Bible says now I'm gonna be very respectful I don't expect these men to shout but I expect you home folks to stop being intimidated in the house of God and worship the Lord like you've been doing the last 11 weeks you know what God has done for you you know if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side you wouldn't even be in this room right now but he had mercy on you time and time and time again and David said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Somebody praise him right now. Ignore your neighbor and worship your God. He's the one that's worthy of everything you can give him. Amen. Yes, sir. There's power in speaking life to something. You don't have to get with me. Well, I mean, I've seen the dead people fall over dead. And when you speak life in Jesus' name and God raised them from the dead in front of a whole church, you know there's power in the name of Jesus. You know there's power in that name. And you know the only one that can heal that cancer is God. Somebody speak. I speak life in Jesus' name. No matter what report you're getting from the doctor, speak life in Jesus' name. Speak that breath of God. That, that trumps every report that you get. That breath of God can fix anything. Receive the Holy Ghost. Well, what happens when I get the Holy Ghost? What, what is that? Some people have no idea what that is. Well, that's what 351 people have experienced in this building the last 10 Sundays. Well, let's, let's go to the Bible and show you what getting the Holy Ghost is. Acts chapter 2, verse number 4. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 10. I mean, you're going to get these verses. 45 and 46. They of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How they know? Verse 46. But they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Acts chapter 19 verse number 5 and verse number 6. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And verse 6 said when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied in your Bible when people were filled with the Spirit of God when they were filled with the Holy Ghost the evidence was the Spirit came out of their mouth and they spoke in a different language why are you saying that 
because when God pours his spirit and when God breathes into you he's so massive and he's so mighty that your little human body cannot keep him down on the inside in fact he said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water this spake he of the spirit and when God fills you you don't have to, well, I think I've got it. I'm not sure. You know you've got it because it comes out of your mouth as the evidence that he's filled you. And nothing is as powerful as receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Nothing. I've seen a lot of miracles, thousands of miracles, and the greatest miracle I've ever seen is someone receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. I say it every Sunday here. I'll keep saying it, that you can be healed of all the diseases in the world and still go straight to hell. You can be a good person. You can love everyone, serve your community, and not go to heaven. That's not the key to heaven. He said you must be born of the water, and you must be born of the Spirit. That's not Josh. That's Jesus that said that. And if you know that's true, you ought to back me up right now and witness that. Because you know that Spirit is what changes everything. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. We're not crazy. We just know what the Lord has done in our life and turned our life around. You don't have to speak in tongues and go crazy and be emotional, but you have to speak in tongues. Well, I'm not emotional. You're lying, too. Your kid runs in front of a car, you'll get emotional. You don't have to be emotional to get the Holy Ghost. I've seen God fill people that were completely stoic, but they prayed and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. It's not about the emotion. It's about wanting the Spirit of God inside of you. And can I say it right now? God is doing miracles all over the world. And He's pouring out His Spirit all over the world right now. And He's washing away sins all over the world right now. Just this Wednesday, just this Wednesday in Pakistan, C.P. Thomas, a missionary that's in India, undercover, met a soldier from ISIS. And he began to talk to him about Jesus. And the soldier didn't know Jesus. And so C.P. asked him, do you know the Christian God? And he said, yes, and I'll kill anyone that worships the Christian God. And C.P. said, well, let me tell you about Jesus since you don't know him. <laughs> and he began to explain to him about Jesus. And he told him that when Jesus, he died for your sin. And if you're washed in his name and you come up out of the water, you fill with his spirit. That one day when you die, he'll resurrect you from the dead. And you'll live with him forever. The man began to cry. And C.P. baptized him in the name of Jesus right there. That's cute little patty cake. Some of us wouldn't even go approach that guy. We wouldn't even go to that country. Aren't you thankful that no matter what's going on, God can deliver you from no matter what you're bound by, what you're held by. He has greater power. Allah is not God. Jesus is God. Can I get a witness in here? Jesus is God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. Oh, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It doesn't matter if you're a criminal or a police officer. It doesn't matter if you're the worst or you're the best. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, rich or poor, black or white, fat or skinny. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It's a promise everybody in here needs to receive. It's the greatest miracle on planet Earth when God fills you with his spirit. Oh, yeah. Why? 
because he said I will give you power over all the power of the enemy and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you you don't walk in fear when you have the Holy Ghost you're not afraid of what the devil can do when you have the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter what he threatens you know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world is there anyone thankful that you know what's inside of you right now you know who's inside of you I remember you can be sure I'm just about that I remember in a service in Indiana a few years ago and they had this revival going on and they they want to do this street service and they had all these bounce houses and a, a stage built out in the parking lot and a band and they were gonna grill all this food and they told they brought this band in and they said to they told me now we're gonna have a band play and all the church is gonna sing and worship and guests are gonna come and then you're gonna preach and I said oh that sounds good well they did the first part they all sang and and then when I got up to preach they all bailed and went to eat like all of them so I'm up there yelling to an empty parking lot a little awkward they were all afraid and here she comes around the street corner I knew she was on the devil's team not because of any anointing but her hair was dyed red and up in horns literally she had horns I, said, I think she works for the other team <laughs> and she's coming around the corner all mad and I was like, oh, this ought to be real fun. And she walks right up to the edge of that little stage. And she's snarling at me the whole time I preach. And after a while, her, her countenance changed a little bit, and she stopped. And so I figured, you know, might as well go big or go home. So I just leaned on her, what's your name? She said, I'm, I'm Melissa. And I, I said, you're not from this church, are you? She's like, no. She said, I'm a secretary to satanic church. I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And she said, all of our congregation is out of town at a witch's convention right now. And it was some kind of wicked. She said, and, we're, and I'm here. And I was walking down the street, and I heard the singing. I wanted to see what it was all about. Then I heard you yelling. I'm like, can I get some backup from the church right about now? They're all over eating their hot dogs like, the <laughs> brave. And uh, so I said, lady. You're here because God wants you here. God brought you here this morning because God has a plan for you. And she said, well, I have all these things I worship Satan with, and I, I, there's so many things I've done. She showed me her arms, officers, and all her, her, both of her arms are just slashed. She said she, the devil wanted her to cut herself for, as praise to him, and she, she would do it in their sanctuary. And she was just, ter it was just terrible. And I said to her, I said, I want you to bring everything that you worship the devil with tomorrow to church. I mean, all your knives, all the books, all the candles, bring everything. She said, everything? I said, bring it all and put it on the altar. Some of you are uncomfortable with this story. You like the cute little stuff. <laughs> and uh, she said, that's a lot of stuff. I said, bring it. And so I walked in the next day at church and there was just boxes all over the platform, boxes full of candles and knives and a giant sword all the way across probably from from here to that monitor this massive sword she told me later she would swing it over the heads of the people in the congregation you're safe here <laughs> you got 40 policemen you're good here honey <laughs> and and i walked in i saw that and i knew i knew we had her i knew the devil was going to lose not because i saw the stuff but but the hair was no longer in the horns I was like, we've dehorned the devil. She's done. And she walks up, she's like, she goes, she's on the front row, and she's like, that's my stuff. I said, I know. <laughs> and she said, that's all of it right there. And I said, that's awesome. And we started preaching. And she started feeling God. She came in a devil worshiper. That's why I'm telling you, no matter what your background is, God wants to help you. And she came in worshiping Satan, messed up. But before it was over, she raised her hands. God hammered her. We took her downstairs and baptized her in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost came upon her. And it doesn't matter what the devil's done.
And I probably shouldn't tell this part with all of our warriors here, but I, I asked the, the church, someone that I was like, do you guys have a lighter? And they're like, yes. I took all of our boxes out in the parking lot. I probably should have had a burn permit. And I set them on fire in the parking lot. Come on. So you, act all holy. Make me say, I'm sorry. Wow. Some of you cussed on the way into church this morning, but that, anyway. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I won't find you. Sit there. I'll find you. And uh, I set him on fire, and I took that sword, and I nailed a nail on the pastor's wall, and I mounted it on the pastor's wall. And they said, what's that for? I said, that's a trophy of hell that's now in the house of God to let hell know. Well, that's crazy. No, the world is crazy out there. And they're doing everything they can do. And they're headed straight to hell. And I do not apologize for standing up for what's true and for what's right. And for defending the God that died for our sins. And everybody in this building needs the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon them. Everyone does. Boldly, like me or not. I could care less. Even if you don't think you need the Lord, you need the Lord. Like that one, I think I've told you before, like that one soldier was in Vietnam. He told me this. He said he got his Bible out in the plane and he was reading his Bible, headed to Vietnam, 20 years old. And this 20 year old kid was beside him. And the 20 year old saw him read his Bible. He said, Oh, great, you're one of them. And the soldier said, Yes, I am. He said, I take it you don't worship the Lord. And the kid said, I'm an atheist. There's no God. <laughs> kept reading his Bible. Guy kept, kid kept getting mad. They'd go to Vietnam. Kid would mock him every time he read his Bible. That God doesn't care about you. He's not real. He is not listening to you. You're wasting your time. Until one day they started taking fire. And they went down to this little foxhole. He said, I looked over. And my friend, the atheist, was begging, God, if you're real, save me right now. And he said, I realized that day what an atheist is. It's someone who's not been scared enough yet. Because you get scared enough, you'll call on that name that you know. I missed about done. Yesterday, one of my friends, Brother Billy Cole's grandson, called me and said, he got this co-worker at work that doesn't talk about God, all that stuff. And yesterday morning, the co-worker's wife had a massive heart attack and they could not get a pulse for several minutes. You know what he did after he called 911? He called, the, he called my friend. He said, hey, son, I need you to pray right now because I can't, there's no pulse. They're on their way and she's not breathing at all. My friend said, put the phone in her chest right now. By the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, I speak life into your body right now. All of a sudden, the pulse came right back and God saved her life. You can call it quick if you want to. I'm telling you, there's a God that hears the prayers of people and can save anyone. Let's stand to our feet right now. Nothing more powerful than Jesus getting inside of you. Nothing. Here's how you get the Holy Ghost. Number one, you've got to repent of your sins. Peter said in Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have to do that. You have to repent. Number two, you have to want the Holy Ghost. You can't get it if you don't want it. Don't know how you can call yourself a Christ follower and not want Christ inside you, though. Just saying. Number three, you have to absolutely focus your mind on God. Focusing your mind on yourself will not help you as you try to pray to get the Holy Ghost. Focusing your mind on God is what you need to do. Not who's praying with you, not who's beside you. Your mind's on God. Number four, you have to have faith that you're going to get the Holy Ghost today. Number five, you have to worship God with your own mouth. You will not speak in tongues if you refuse to speak to him. But God can fill everyone in this building with the Holy Ghost because it's a promise in his word. And it's in the last days, and it's happening. Thousands of people are getting the Holy Ghost all the time now. All the time, weekly. 
Why? Because God is about to come back. And he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's why you're having 350 people get the Holy Ghost in a church like this. Why, in one church, it's happening. Why? Because God's about to come back. And you need to be ready for him when he comes back. You need to be ready for him. Nothing is as important as you getting saved. It does not matter what car you drive, how much money's in your account, how many followers you have on social media. That's not going to matter in eternity. What's going to matter is where are you at, heaven or hell? Everyone in this building needs to go to heaven. Can I get a witness of that? Everyone in this room needs to go to heaven. Here's what we're about to do in a moment. I'm going to ask Bishop and the preachers to come on the platform right now with me, please. Here's what we're about to do. In a moment, we're going to come forward and we're going to repent of our sins. Officers, you don't have to come forward. I'm just for the congregation. You can if you want to. You don't have to. I'm going to ask the congregation to come forward and we're going to repent of our sins and we're going to pray, and then I'll pray the prayer of faith, and God's going to pour out His Spirit. Just like last Sunday, 37 people were filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Sunday before that, 32 people were filled. It's happening like this all over, all over. Help me out right now. Would you turn to your neighbor and ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost yet? Would you, would you do that right now? Would you turn to your neighbor and ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost yet? I think I heard six people say it. Can you, I'm just going to, the mic must be off. Can you turn to your neighbor? And ask them if you received the Holy Ghost yet. There you go. There you go. If they said no, tell them today's the day. Someone on the platform said today's the day. So someone up here needs the Holy Ghost. Listen. I know I'm preach bold. But I... One glimpse of hell and you'd thank me for preaching bold. You'd thank me for preaching bold. Amen. The people have mocked me and attacked me and walked out and died the same day more than once. You don't play games right here. You know God wants to save everyone. And I don't preach this on Wednesday nights and Saturday nights. I'm preaching to the church. But when, the, when, when there are guests here that have not experienced this Jesus the way they need to, the way he wants them to. And I don't care. I don't hold back. I come at them and I bring them the truth because that's what matters. Nothing else matters but are you going to go to heaven or not, period. Here's what's going to happen. In a moment, we're going to come forward. We're going to repent of our sins. Bishop will lead us in a prayer of repentance. So we'll all repent from the top down. Of every, I can't repent for you and you can't repent for me. So I have to repent for myself and you must repent for yourself for the sins that we've committed after that i'll pray the prayer of faith we'll pray with each other and god will fill several people with the gift of the holy ghost are you ready right now for god to do it